What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haver. We're going to be talk, talking through the first NBA slate post-All-Star break, which, you know, the I know the All-Star break was always part a lot of the way through the season, but doing it 60 some odd games into the season just seems kind of crazy. Um, but I'm excited. I'm ready to be back. The break, the break did its job for me. I, I feel like I got I got there and I also had, you know, a couple of nice scores right before an NBA and then you know, I'm ready, ready to get back after it. How, what are what are your thoughts, Sheets? Dude, I'm I, I'm, I'm psyched to get back to the NBA, especially since I since I 15 way chopped a League of Legends tournament this morning for 900 hours. I mean, you got, <laughs> you, got you got to have some kind of cushion, man, to deal with <laughs> to deal with the, deal the NBA. With the NBA. That's, that's my motto, man. You got to have some kind of cushion in in fringe sports to to deal with the NBA. Um, but but tonight. We're going to come right after it with with a bang. What we're going to do is I'm going to do a a live sweat at 11. PM. Oh, you are okay. I might. I, just, I, I think I can probably join you. Yep. Uh, you know, there's a couple of late night hammer games that we'll probably be able to sweat the last half of. We'll we'll, we'll sweat the uh, the big NBA stuff. We'll you know if there's a sweat in hockey, I'll pull that up. I'll whine about my golf, or maybe we'll we'll brag about our golf. Um, <laughs> and and we'll ju- we'll just have some fun. You know, it's already, mm-hmm. it's already going to be a long, uh, a long, uh, a long day because we have the site meeting. We got this. We got, yep. we got we're have the six o'clock. So, um, we're we're I'll be I'll be ready to come back with NBA with uh with a bank. Let's do it. I'm excited. Um, I just wanted to remind people, like, like it's you're going to have a lot of different things um to look to look out for. There's new teams. There's new lineups. So so there, there's going to be a, a few speculative slates, and even though those teams aren't going to necessarily figure it all out and in one day. So you're, you're going to see a, a few, like, you just don't, don't be surprised if, if the minutes projections are way off on some guys and, and I'll go through it game by game on some of the spots we're going to look out for, but we do have some, some sort of different built teams than we did before. Although we have less tonight playing, there's, there's, there's probably more tomorrow night going. Um, you ready to jump into game for, game by game? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to be taken by surprise from some stuff because the projections that I'm working with are, are hours old. So if anything came up in the last couple of hours, it's probably going to not, I'm probably going to be kind of ignorant to it, but okay. we'll just, we'll just kind of see. I mean, when I first looked at the, at the slate, given what I had, I didn't see too much value to start off with. Um, so if anything's happened in the last hour, it will make me look ignorant. I apologize in advance, but uh, we will, uh, we'll, we'll go, I guess we'll game by game and then you'll surprise me. Yeah. Maybe not bottom tier value. I, I do think that there is a plenty of speculative value. And I think that you got like the 4k range is really strong. I feel like at the moment, but we'll see. Um, all right. Denver Cleveland is what you got first. Uh, let's talk about it. You've got Jokic playing. They're playing for first place in their thing. They're playing for an MVP. It's a really tough matchup, but it's Jokic. I'm going to guess this is where we get Jamal Murray back considering he's been out forever. And this is, you'd think that they were just doing it for the all-star break. That's what it's, totally seemed like because he was like a game time decision all of those days um with that with all this I, i'm i'm basically off of this game with without a potential speculative play on chetty osman that's one i'm considering a, a wild card play on but nothing nothing special in this game really stands out to me in fact i think you could make an argument that the best play would be like a wild donovan mitchell who they priced way the hell up but this is the kind of game where he goes off um I just don't know at 9,500 if that's if that's the right price to try and take a shot on him here. So I'm not that interested in this game from a DFS perspective. No, usually Cleveland games are not good for DFS. Um, but I mean, listen, you want narratives. I mean, this is this is like the, the return of the bubble of the bubble kings between um, between uh, uh, Mitchell and, and Jamal Murray. You know, the uh, yeah. uh, that was that was that was quite a show those two put on during. That's actually a good point. Yeah, yeah, and, and they have. I don't know if they. Well, remember, because Mitchell's now in the Eastern Conference, I don't know if they've gone against each other. And, and considering that Murray's hurt like every other game, uh, maybe even the last time these guys did have a chance, they didn't play against each other. So that's something. But I'd have to believe that there's got to be a better game than this one. Um, but with that said, uh, Jokic is – I have him as one of the – one, two, three. I have like six – I have like eight spend-ups. I mean, like nine sp- – there's a lot of guys that are kind of, I don't say close, but at least close enough. Um, yeah. And I, I listen. I, I, I spoke about this before when I talked about Cleveland. I mean, they, they just, they take their defense really freaking seriously um, to a fault. And just listen, as, as, as matchup proof as, as, as Jokic is, and going for the MVP and going for first place and all that stuff. I don't know. I, I I'll probably end up passing on Jokic. I think Jared Allen is a good mid-range play though at 6,600 though. Um, mm-hmm. 
when I was looking at the slate first, what I'd like to do is I like to see if there's a lot of value. If there's not a lot of value, I immediately try to find mid-range plays. So as I just mentioned, my first look, I didn't see too much value. So I started to scan to see what types of mid-range guys I had. And the first guy that did show up for me was Jared Allen. So um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll put him in as probably between him, Mitchell and Garland as, you know, the, my three plays from this game. Um, and I, I don't know if I'm going to actually play him in my big buy-ins, but who knows if no value shows up, this, these are the types of plays I like to play. Yeah. And, and, and just to throw out there, I mean, just remember Kevin Love is gone now. Um, so like Mobley, they priced up a little bit because of it. Although Love was sort of like sort of on the outside of the rotation anyway by the end, but it should free up a little bit for Osman and Levert. Uh, these are probably deeper plays than things we'd look at more on small slates, but just want to keep everybody sort of get you with their head pointing forward, go, you know, going forward and and keep an eye out for for some of these prices because there is definitely a chance you see more Osman minutes tonight. There's definitely a chance you see um you actually might see Osman, Okoro, and Levert, you could argue, as as all very fringy value plays. That's my favorite thing. I don't mind your Jared Allen call in the mid-range, just not didn't 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 seem to to love him too much when I first started trying to build today. But he's fine. Um, tough matchup, obviously, for him too. That's, that's the thing; it's going against Jokic. It's kind of hard to get there all the time because he he actually is a better. I think he's become a better defender, and more than that, he just takes you up so much work defensively, gets everybody in foul trouble in the first quarter, and it's kind of hard. That's the one thing that scares me about that play. But let's move on to the next one. Um, next up, you've got Detroit, right? Yeah, Detroit at uh, Orlando. I uh, just want to say a quick thing about Orlando. This is a team on the rise. Orlando will be a high playoff, will be like a, a mid, mid-level mid playoff seed ne- team next year. And I think Orlando within a couple of years is going to be competing for like Eastern Conference titles. I really think that they're they're built that way. Um, and I've been very impressed with them this year. But after their awful start, they've actually been like an average team, even with missing guys and, and all kinds of things going on for them. So just... Just keep an eye out for for both of these teams as as two of my favorite future bet teams. Um, Detroit, you never know, but they they, they have so much talent between these teams. I think that they're going to be they're going to have a bright future. Having said all that, for tonight, I think you're looking at Killian Hayes is going to project really well for Detroit. I think that uh, Jaden Ivey is completely reasonable. I think it's crazy that they still have Bogdanovich, and I don't know how that happened. Um, I don't really know what they're going for with that. And it's too tricky to play the bigs because you have a Wiseman, Duran, Stewart, where they're sort of rotating, you know, usually it's going to be Duran or Wiseman in the game, but I, you could see one of those guys, those guys playing together and Stewart sitting a little bit. So I have Stewart, Hayes, and, uh, and Ivy, uh, I'm sorry, Hayes, then Stewart, then Ivy. I'm sorry. Ugh. Hayes, yeah, Hayes, that's right. Hayes, Stewart, Ivy is my three favorite plays here. And then on the Orlando side, I'm kind of tempted to, to go back to Suggs. I think you're going to see more Suggs in the second half of the year. The problem is it's just hard to find a spot because Cole Anthony has played well this year, and and so has Markel Fultz has been terrific this year. So Suggs, Suggs and Carter I have no problem with. I have no problem with Wagner, but nobody who stands out as a must-play. What, what do you have here? I don't have anything on Orlando. Um, the one guy – well, I have two guys who are showing up for me on Detroit. One I probably am not going to play. Uh, the one I'm probably not going to play is James Wiseman. Um, I, like, like you said, I mean, like they didn't, I mean, Duran's playing too well, you know, and, and Stewart in there also, I don't, I don't know if they're, how much they're really going to go to Wiseman, but the, the, the one you mentioned who is, um, like you said, is, is going to project pretty well is, um, is Killian Hayes. So he would be, uh, I guess my favorite from this, from this game, but, uh, and I do think, listen, in, in the absence of, 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 of decent value, but there, there probably will be. I mean, I think it is a pretty, uh, pretty strong play. I'm mean, killing Hayes at that price. So, mm-hmm. um, at, at this early part of the day, I would, I would consider him a pretty good, pretty good play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, uh, you always have a little bit of a wide range of outcomes with these Detroit guys. Um, what's weird is that they're oddly a deep team, even though they don't have like they're not a very good team, but they're they're weirdly deep. So, could it be Hayes or Burr? Like, it could easily be one of these other guys who who step up tonight. I just think the Orlando pricing is just something I want to focus on because I think that everybody looks tempting, but there's just so many of them. So you kind of just have to commit. And I I do think if I had to commit, I think I think Wendell Carter is a pretty good play at 5800, and I think that uh, that Jalen Suggs has has plenty of upside at 4200. Uh, been at 30 32 and 36 two of the last three games, of course. I've, I had him in the other game <laughs> and, they would, and on a lineup that cashed deep in the, in the, in the 888 that night. So that was 
frustrating when he had a six fantasy point game. If he gets that 36 for me, I win, I win the 100K, 150K, I guess it was that night. All right, let's move on. Well, before you move on, before before you move on for just a second, um, you mentioned that Orlando uh, is a team on the rise. Are they, are they, um, is it possible they make the playoffs or no? It's possible technically, but I don't, I don't think that's what their even their, their thing is right now. Like I, I do think they're trying to play well and win games, but I don't think they have a real chance. I mean, they're, they're, they're four games out of the 10 seed. And even that, like you have the teams like the Raptors, Wizards, Hawks. I don't really see those teams falling out. So I think they kind of know this is their gearing up year, trying to play better. They changed the rules. So, so, so hardcore tanking, it doesn't benefit you nearly as much. You only get a few percentage point differences. So as long as they're in that 11 or worse, I think they're probably okay. They're, and I think, I think they, I think they want to win games and they want to play hard, but I just think that they're building for the future. The only reason I ask is, is if you guys didn't didn't check this out the other day, actually it was yesterday. Um, we did a um, we did a uh, we did a video um, kind of like previewing the second half of the NBA season. And one of the things that we did was some kind of uh, we we talked about some of the futures bets that were out there, and and I, I encourage everybody to check that out. And we did actually play one. Uh, we did play one between the two of us. To just mm-hmm. again. Futures bets are in general just pretty, pretty awful. But we 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 took a shot with one. The only reason I ask if you think that Orlando is, you know, if you can get a good price, is if you think it's worth taking a shot on them making the playoffs. But if you're saying that it's really not even that big of a priority, yeah, um, then maybe uh, maybe that's uh, it's not. And the teams they have to pass are just a little too good, and there's too many of them. Okay. Or a little too not bad, I should say. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have Boston, Indiana. Sheets, why don't you start this one off? Um. Yeah. I mean, as far as value goes, I really don't see much of anything from this game. Um, but with respect to spend ups, I, I mentioned, I don't know, Tatum just for me just kind of rates just worse than a lot of these 11K guys. So probably going to be, unless we get some injury news on this, this, this game is probably going to end up being a pass for me. Yeah, I, I have some interest in Horford. Um, yeah, I think the price the price is reasonable. I have an I have interest because of the matchup in Robert Williams. Um, I like this matchup. I, I'd like to do something. I don't have anything that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, like you said, Tatum at eleven K. With I mean, people think like yeah, and he, and it's true. Tatum was paying off this price tag, but remember, most of those games were without Jalen Brown, who's back now. Um, I actually think Jalen Brown is in play just because the matchup, but I don't think anybody like nobody stands out as being someone I, I need to go out and get. As I say, every game, I think that Tyrese Halliburton is, is, is that guy who just always makes for a great tournament play, even in a tough matchup here. Um, if they're going to stay close, that would be the way they do it. But unless we hear about some guys sitting, I'm probably going to be mostly off this one as well with that maybe a shot at Halliburton, maybe in a small, in a larger field thing, maybe a shot at Heald in a larger field thing, and maybe a shot at Horford, but nothing, nothing that's especially exciting. Aaron Wise to minus one now, by the way. <laughs> that's, uh, that, there, there, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. With a, with a three in a row and an eagle. All right. So then we, uh, we move on to New Orleans and Toronto, right? New Orleans and Toronto. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is another one, like on the New Orleans side as of right now, I mean, I've got them playing like at least like somewhere between, they could play 12 guys tonight if they want to. Um, And like 12 guys who actually play for them. So I I just can't find anything to do here um, on the New Orleans side. And it's a bad matchup on top of it. It's a good game. I think that there's something to the Podol thing, maybe more than other people gave credit for. And, I have to, you know, look, I'm not trying to take a victory lap. I was, I'll take a victory lap on calling that the trade was going to happen. I'm not going to say that J- that Podol is going to go 15 of 17 again and put up 57 fantasy points. Um, although those numbers make me want to play a big from Detroit because that was against uh, Orlando who, who just gives it up to the big ones. Um, I, I do think there's something to the Podol, the Podol part that they're using him a lot more. I think that people maybe, maybe initially thought. I still don't know how interested I am, but he's definitely on my list in the Wendell Carter realm as that 58, 5,900 guy. Um, that's pretty much all I have from this game. And everybody else on Toronto, as always, you can make a case for him, but I just don't think I really want to today. How about you? Yeah, that's, I, I don't, again, I hate to, well, you know, it's good. I mean, trying to make yeah, a, good. Yeah, narrow down. Trying to make a, 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 a large slate small. I mean, this is another one. I just, I'm just scanning my, I'm just scanning my board. And I just, I just don't see anything, you know, uh, 
uh, it's just the past for me. Mm -hmm. I think that's totally reasonable. Um, and remember that, you know, these things might be a little different later today. And we're, we're going to have, I think, a lot today is, or what it looks like right now is there's so many guys that are just like, like okay-ish plays. There's, there's, there's not the obvious standouts that you must play type of things um, without, with the exception of like three or four positions. Um, so I think that it's going to be kind of an interesting tournament slate anyway. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting, I'll, I'll, I'm getting to some good ones a little bit later. Yeah. Um, there's, there's some good stuff coming. I'm getting some good. We have uh, Memphis in Philadelphia. Uh, yes. Um, I guess now this begins the, the Embiid MVP run, I suppose. Yep. Um, and whenever, you know, whenever you have a chance to play him, I mean, you can think about it. I, I, I prefer to play him at low ownership, but that's, you know, you can't have everything in life, I suppose. Um, I have him rated just a little bit below uh, Luca tonight. Um, obviously different positions and everything like that. But it, it's, it's, it's close enough where I, I, would, I would play him. So uh, Embiid is a very, very legitimate spend up. And, and Harden, um, you know, if, if you need to save the money, I, I, guess, I guess you could try him instead. But I, I definitely think that Embiid is 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 the superior uh, spend up today, and I don't know if I want to play Jaw in this matchup. If you want to know the truth, so um, for me, it's going to be probably Embiid uh, or not much else in this game. Uh, looking that down the list of value, for, uh, probably not much. I love Embiid tonight. Um, it, 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 we can go talk about narratives. We can talk about a bunch of different things. I, I think that Embiid is. It's a nationally televised game. I do think that that MVP thing means a lot to him. They're also making a push in the East. Um, they want to stay in that top three. And, and they still have a shot at the number one seed in the East, by the way. Uh, they, 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 they were hot before the All-Star break, just not quite as hot as the Bucks, who have won, 11, won 12 in a row. But they're, they're really interesting. And, and Tobias Harris is 4,900. Now, <laughs> it feels trappy, right? Like, just, just looking at the game logs and everything. But you've got like a guy who in a close game is going to play 30 plus minutes. I don't know, man. It feels a, it's, it's probably a little too cheap. I feel like all these guys feel too cheap, but then you see the production, you kind of get why. But I, I feel like Harris, Melton, Maxi, they're all interesting to me. All the other pieces. So if I'm not playing Embiid, and maybe even if I am, I'm going to include, the, you know, and, and throw Harden in the mix, but he's just a spend up. I mean, his spend downs go, though. Maxi at 53 could always get himself into a game, especially in this kind of a pace. Um, I think Tobias Harris, I think the, the Anthony Melton are all interesting. So Philly just all, that's my note is they're just all a little too cheap um, for the, for the environment of the matchup. Memphis, a terrific defensive team, but they're not the same without Steven Adams. And that's partly why I like yeah, uh, Embiid also. I feel like Embiid will have a million assists if he doesn't have a ton of points tonight, just because they like, you're going to have Tillman, Brandon Clark, and then, Jaron Jackson, who's probably one of the best defenders in the NBA, but he doesn't like, he just physically can't match up with that size. So I, I really do think this is a, like if Steven Adams is playing, I would not be talking as much about Embiid, but I'm very high on the Philly side of this. And as usual, I'm having a hard time getting too much on the other side um, with the pricing and everything for, for Memphis. If you wanted to just say YOLO and gamble, I don't mind if you wanted to do that with Ja, just not what I'll be doing. All right, Cheats, talk about I can see you got Sohan already pull, pulled up. Well, I mean, it's, it's a 14-point spread. Um, yeah, San Antonio is just, just you know, they're about 15 points worse than the Mavericks. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, and uh, we'll start with Luca, I guess. So Luca, I have him as, you know, right alongside of Embiid. But, you know, you have you have blowout risk uh, on in, in this game. So that is definitely, to me, that would put, you know, Embiid probably a little bit better of a play than Luca, but I certainly have no problem with that. Um, I'm not playing Kyrie Irving at 10-3, and, and I'll tell you, I'm still not even sure if I'm supposed to play Luca with, with, with uh, Kyrie on the court, considering also the possibility this game blows out. So I'm, I'm, I'm back to Embiid, actually, uh, as, as opposed to playing Luca here. You want to take some shots with San Antonio? By the way, like if 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 they actually do sit like Sohan, I mean, I, I, I'm just not quite. I wouldn't quite understand what's going on. You know, like he played the last three games for the All Star break, and then he's had nothing to do. And and unless he played in one of the the All Star game, did he play in one of the All Star game games? Is he like? Uh, I I didn't see the the rookie game uh, this year. So uh, the the rookie sophomore game. Uh, 
Okay. I don't I don't know what what he did honestly. I don't I don't I don't know if he played in it. Uh, in any in any case, I presume he's playing. Okay, um, and I get I I don't want to play any of these guys. You know, I guess he's 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 my favorite. Actually, my favorite is probably Collins, but I could probably find better, uh, which we'll get to at that position. Um, so I'm probably going to just – I'm not playing McDermott. I don't know. I, I will all shout out to uh, – and it's going to make you a little mad. not going to make you mad, but it's kind of annoying. You know, when we – we haven't talked about this. When, when they had that 888 a couple of days ago, the 250K, whatever, mm-hmm. dude, this is, it's like almost, almost unfair. Like, like, like 80% of your lineup looks like busted. But like the but you had somehow McKeel Branham at like no ownership. I don't know, it's pretty sharp. Scored a zillion freaking fantasy points. You no, know, I didn't totally bust. I cashed in that lineup. Oh, did you cash in that one? That was the I one with know. Suggs where he had eight, six, seven fantasy points, uh, sandwich between a 32 and a 36 that would have won. Uh, okay. Game. In any case, I mean, like to see you get off there with start with Branham, like, you know, like 30 fantasy points in the first half or something, and, and like no ownership. Like, oh, come on, one time. And then yeah. he kind of like leveled off or whatever, but still. Um, I just figured I'm, I'm looking at Branham on my sheet here and I'm you know, just kind of coming up with stuff. So I guess, I guess I'll pass the, I guess I'll pass this game. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's really like, it feels blowouty. I don't know how to, to rework it. Like, I think that Zach Collins projects really is going to project really well. I think that Devonte Graham is certainly reasonable. Um, McDermott's 3,100. D Pates Diop is starting now, not my favorite one. I think that I would try to go with like, well, I'd like to see a starting lineup, see if they do anything different, but I actually don't mind the idea of taking a shot on Bronham. Uh, Sohan, by the way, did play in the rising star game and apparently played well. He's only 19 years old, by the way. So they're going to, they're going to, they're going to let him play. Like they have, it's, it's funny because he's kind of blowout proof and that he's going to play like 26, 28 minutes. And he's also kind of like not going to, you're not going to get 30 out of them if, if, if they're, if they're getting smashed. So it's kind of it kind of works in a weird way and probably just enough to keep me off of them. But I do think Collins, Devontae Graham are definitely like in play and and Bronham. Um on the the problem is they just like they, they just take the ball out of Bronham's hands so much. I wish they wish they'd give him a break. And and yeah, I think Luca's gonna be the most popular play. I think it's really weird for people to see him below 12k. I will remind everybody that with Kyrie Irving that it's not the same situation, but I still think that he's a, ter- a terrific spend up and you know, there, we 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 would be talking about squeezing Luke and Embiid together if we had the, the value we had on some of the slates right before the break. We just don't have it today, um, at least not as of right now. All right, ready for uh, OKC in, in in Utah? Yeah. So I guess this is where the ownership is going to come from. I mean, this is where you know it's where I'm getting all my projections. I, I, I guess must be must be have the guards in Utah out or something like that. I, I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm getting Taylor Horton Tucker at like a zillion. He's gonna be uh, he's gonna be the highest owned player on the slate by even if it's just hard enough, I think. And then, and then I'm also getting, but the the guy I really want to play is I want to I want to play the the ultra aforementioned Walker Kessler at 57. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'll play. Uh, that's the that's the, that's the guy I was referring to when I said I'd rather not play Collins. I'd rather play Kessler in you know in in a one point spread. Um, and uh, so I like that. And then Olenek at 5,300. I mean, this is where seems like where, where, where all the action is. Um, uh, Kessler, Horton Tucker, even, even, and then even have Jordan Clarkson, 7,500. He looks all right. Even, even I'll even pay for freaking marketing. I mean, this is, this is a 2 million point total, you know, with, 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 with a, with a zero point spread. Um, this is, listen, this is, this is a perfect game to have the, uh, to have my, the late live sweat, let's put it that way. um, yeah. show up at 11 o'clock for the last quarter of this thing. That, 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 that could be, that could be pretty, that could be slate determining and yep. then to follow it up with like the last half of the, uh, of the Portland Sacramento game. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, so yeah, I like all the Utah guys and, and look uh, on the other side of this game, I mean, you know, projection or whatever it is, I mean, Shea is a perfectly good run back against all this. And, and, and uh, I don't know, is Giddy, is Giddy out or something like that? Like, why is he not projecting? Well, I like, guess he, he never, Oh, he's 8,300. Ouch. Um, yeah, they have to yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of rough. So I, I would, I would take a shot with this one. Just, just play Shea and play your favorite Utah's and just, just hope the game goes bananas, which it, which it rates to do. So I don't know. 
Yeah, I think that I can get on board with the Clarkson thing tonight, by the way. I think if you're going to fade THT, which I'm probably going to end up playing THT. He's the kind of the most obvious looking play. We've seen this happen before with him. <laughs> like, not quite to this extent, but he's probably not going to start. Um, the minutes sort of come and go. He's extremely high. His, his usage has been really good. He's active. He does other things like rebounds. You don't need to rely just on scoring. And he gets plenty of assists. Um I think that like like I think you have to play like like one of here Clarkson like I just don't see how they're both going to fail with no Sexton obviously no Conley there anymore like their other guards are Agbaji who's really like more of a three and does it at very low usage Markinen should get some usage I think Kelly O probably benefits a lot from 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 this as well I really think this is a is a, an interesting game. Um, so THT is the most obvious, but number one play for me there. I think playing one of Olinick or Kessler makes a lot of sense. I'm totally fine with Markkinen, but I prefer Clarkson. Um, and that's that's how I'm ranking those guys. And on the other side, I might consider taking a really long sh- – like Jalen Williams has a huge range of outcomes, but is 1% owned every single time he plays. And, you know, he's put up 30 in two out of his last four games. That's – you're 10xing your price – you know, two out of your last four and, and getting more minutes regularly, certainly going to have a little bit of interest. Um, but nobody, like, I, I think that you could, I think this is a, a decent spot for Shea. Um, I just think Jalen Williams has been so involved offensively for them. And the, the, the other Jalen Williams, the, the J- Jalen with no why, uh, the wing, yeah. he is such a good player, man. I think this guy's going to be an all-star in the future. He's really, really good. And it's taking away a little bit from Giddy and Shea, but not enough to where I want to play him exactly. And Lou Dort is 4,400, which is probably too cheap. So I'm going to say Dort is probably my favorite play on the other side. But I do like trying to get like a little bit of a stack here. I just wish I could find more on OKC that I liked other than the 4,400 Dort. All right. Next up, we have, you have the Lakers? I do. Okay. She'd start us off here. Well, can you get... Can you can we can we get your extra your extra two or three points out of Kevon Looney tonight that you couldn't get the other day? We'll uh we'll uh we'll we'll see about that because I mean he's looking like an actually a very very strong you know for strongish value play tonight. Um, so that's you got thirty minutes, two games in a row, um, 35, 36 fantasy points, which is on a slate like this works so far. Uh, Lakers probably pretty good. Uh, Good pace matchup, at least. Um, I don't. Uh, I, you'd have to think they could use him uh, against against uh, AD. Um, so I like that. It's kind of mean that they made Jordan pull ninety two hundred because I would always like I'd like to play him, but right ninety two hundred is just I don't. It's just not going to happen for me. Uh, and then you know you want to take some shots at some other dudes from Golden State. I don't know. You want to take a shot at Kuminga at forty one hundred. I don't know. I, I don't want to play like these other guys. They really did a good job, actually, of yeah. pricing these guys up for for Curry and, and Curry being out now. You know, Thompson's tough to play at eight eight hundred. Poole's tough to play at ninety one hundred. Draymond's tough to play at seventy four hundred. But they didn't uh, they didn't price Looney up at all because you know Curry doesn't affect Looney, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I do like Looney here um, on the Lakers side. Um, you want to talk me into one of these guys? Uh, I'll listen, but uh, both LeBron and AD just right below these other these other spends that we've talked about and a couple that we will talk about. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. So one thing we can thank the Lakers for, the Lakers lineup that came out like yesterday. <laughs> like we have their starting lineup and it is, they changed it. So basically they're, they're playing, they're starting Russell, Beasley, LeBron, Vanderbilt, Davis. I say they changed it, but it's weird because they haven't had all these guys together very much. So Schroeder off the bench now, Hachimura obviously off the bench. Um, I do think Vanderbilt and Beasley are somewhat interesting and, uh, definitely more on the Vanderbilt side, but Beasley is the kind of guy who, I mean, you get him in a high paced game. Like it's not going to surprise me if he puts up 35 fantasy points tonight. Um, I, 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 I can't quite get myself with LeBron and, and Davis thing, although they're both, you do get a, a little discount off a nice discount off them off of some of the other guys. But I, I, I don't know. It seems like a matchup where you want to play Davis. I just can't quite get there. You do have the revenge narrative for D'Angelo. And that's uh, like, as a Laker fan, which I'm not no longer really, I'm not really pumped about this team at all. I don't like what anything they did except for getting Vanderbilt. Um, 
I don't know, man. I can't, I can't find a, a piece of the Lakers that makes perfect sense to me. Vanderbilt makes the most sense. Beasley is an interesting tournament play. And then on the uh, Golden State side, hey, um, Looney's fine with me. I don't, I don't see him maybe quite as high as you do. Um, I am okay with him here because they're, you know, but I, I think they're going to like to Michael Green's going to come back. So going to take away some of those minutes where he was sort of secure before. And he did, he did come back toward the end uh, before the all-star break anyway, but I, I don't know. I'm just having trouble getting, uh, getting too much a target uh, from this one. So Looney and, and uh, Vanderbilt are my favorite plays, which is kind of weird to say about a Laker warrior game. <laughs> that was the other guy I was going to ask you about was Jermichael Green. He's kind of showing up as kind of a fringy, uh, fringy play at 3,100 here at very low ownership, at least for now. So, yeah, I don't think that anyone's going to play him. And I don't think anyone really should play him. Like if you play him over Jalen Williams, I don't really understand what you're doing. Like well, I mean, you're getting, I'm seeing like 2% ownership. That's all. Awesome. Same thing with Jalen Williams. No, no, I'm saying that any, I'm just saying that's the way I look at it. Like uh, okay. Jalen Williams, at least is a starting center. Who's going to get run. Jermichael Green, you know, his range of minutes go from 10 to 20, where Jalen Williams go from 15 to 32, you know? Um, so that's that's sort of my reason for not not having any interest in him there. And he's also only center eligible. I think we do. Like you mentioned Kessler, but I also liked Wendell Carter, and I also liked Podol a little bit. So those guys are all – and then you have Zach Collins, and they're all in the same price range. Um, all right, here's where you're going to get some value, potentially. Chief, why don't you say what, what the projections look like to, in this uh, Portland side? Yeah, Portland because, side. because you have um, uh, Anthony Simons out. So mm -hmm. it's going to become kind of like the Portland shooting guard wing lottery that we've kind of dealt with before a little bit. So you're going to get three guys uh, right now that are projecting in the mix for that for that role, uh, for that upgrade. And that's uh, Cam Reddish, Shaden Sharp, and Matthias Steibel. And I have a very strong opinion on which of these guys. Uh I would pick. I mean, they all rate to be at least right now the exact same point per dollar, almost the exact same, same whatever. I, I don't think it's even close. And we talked about with you. I agree with you. It's I not think, close. But who do you like? Yeah, I mean, I think Shaden Sharp is like a lock of those three. I mean, like you know, and and the reason why is 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 just because of his style of play. You know, like uh, you know, Matias Steibel is pretty good. You know, what do you call him? Three and D guy. He's not going to really do all that much. And and he, Cam Reddish. You know, as much as I've talked about him, he's not going to listen. This is a this is a fast paced game against freaking Sacramento. You want guys that are flying through the lane. You know what I mean? Like and doing whatever. And we talked about him. You, you were telling me about Shane Sharp like the whole year. And, yeah. and in the last game, I, I actually got a chance to see him play. I'm like, Oh my God, he got freaking dunked it from the freaking foul line. You know, know like, that's, that, that's the guy I want in a game like this. Somebody that can dunk from the foul line, not, not a guy who's really good at defense that can stand in the corner and make threes. you know? Right. Um, so I think between those three, if I have to choose one, uh, it was going to be shade and sharp, and that's going to be my my play. Now, now from the um, for our spend ups go, I mean, I it's 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 pretty much impossible to deny what Lillard has been doing, but but it is possible to like worry about eleven four. I mean, eleven four is I mean you've got to you've got you've got to perform for eleven four. I mean, you compare him like listen, what he's got to do at eleven four is is different than what say Luca or Embiid have to do at eleven four, which is basically what they all are. Um, or Jokic. I mean, like Lillard's got to just shoot the freaking lights out every night, which he usually does, right? Um, because he doesn't get triple doubles. He does, you know what I mean? Like even if he get that many assists, you know. Mm -hmm. um, where Luka and MB can just kind of just like just just have their game, and you can look like they're not even doing anything, and they'll end up with sixty, you know. Um, so it's a little harder for 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 Lillard. Um, but listen, this is a this is a you know, this is a two hundred forty point total. You know, it's a, it's certainly uh not going to tell you not to play him. And then on the other side of this, uh, you know, Sabonis, very, very strong at 10-1. Uh, he'd be my top guy. I don't know if I would play Fox at 98. I mean, he's going to – I have him very, very low on, so that, that that helps. But I would play if I'm going to run at somebody back with any of this stuff. I would I would play Sabonis. Uh, again, the center spot is, again, it's a tough spot to take, you know, because – you have the you have Embiid if you want to do that, mm -hmm. and then if you wanted to play, you know either Kessler or Collins, but uh, certainly you know Sabonis is right up there on the list. Yeah, I like Sabonis a lot. Um, I just think he's going to have a he's just going to do well in matchups like this. I don't think I'm going to prioritize him because I just like Embiid a lot and I like the other five K guys too much at center. But I do think that Sabonis is completely reasonable at ten one, and I, I have no problem wanting to do that. 
I also think you can play multiple wings if you want to here. Um, I, I feel like I, I'm. you're going to have some uh, maybe a wider range of outcome for Shaden Sharp than than for Thibault. Well, actually, it's not true. Thibault can put up six or 30. But Shaden Sharp at least is going to be aggressive out there. And and if he really plays, if they really, if you're really going to project these guys at similar minutes, Sharp is to me obviously the better play of all of them. But I think you could play Sharp and Thibel in the same lineup, and there's no problem with that. But I don't, I don't like love the the, th the Thibel thing. But they are showing that they're going to play in minutes. Like if you're going to play him, you know, 30 minutes, then I, I'm going to have an interest in a 3,500 guy, especially when he's in the last game and may allow me to do some pivoting later if I need to. So. Shaden Sharp, Thibel, then Reddish for me personally. Uh, no problem if you want to play Reddish, uh, but I, I personally am lower on him than the other ones. I think Jeremy Grant is a terrific play. Unfortunately, I think that the ownership will reflect that. And I think that your tournament play, like I have two weird ones that, that aren't going to make a lot of sense to people. One is Keegan Murray. I think that um, they started cutting his minutes a little bit before the break. I think he was getting kind of worn down with the season. After a little break, maybe those minutes get back up to those 35 minutes a game. And, and I think that this is a kind of this, this is definitely kind of matchup where you can, as a shooter, a guy who's who's not going to be guarded much, you're going to get a lot of open looks. Um, they're going to double Sabonis almost every time. Um, Fox is going to they're going to run the high screen roll with Fox. I just could see Keegan Murray having an like sort of an outlier shooting game. And the same is true in a different vein for, for Malik Monk. Um, so those would be my two wild card plays. Um, I Barnes fine i'm okay you know we know what we know what we're getting we know what the deal is with barnes and i think it's fine and i think herder is fine i'm just not going to play them the funny part about barnes like how many times has he projected really well at a first look and look at his last six seven games 12 fantasy points 19 19 15 19 and 14 um so i i don't think i'm going to do it i'm just throwing it out there that he does look cheap and he might even get owned a little bit on FanDuel, like where he's 4600 but I, I, I'm having trouble uh, outside of Sabonis finding a guy I really want to commit to on the Sacramento side, other than those wild card long shots I talked about. But I do think that you, you know, you're gonna. You, you, I think you almost need to play one of the wings from from Portland, and as you as you mentioned, I like Sharp the best. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's let, let's have some fun. Let's, let's build, 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 build the Saberson build seven hours before lock and and see what um, see what we got. What we can come up with. I would imagine. Uh, well, oh, oh, a whole bunch of Utah. Yeah, okay, a whole bunch of Utah and a whole bunch of Portland. That's going to be my my guess. So let's build a full one hundred and fifty, and let's see what we would come up with. Um, I would imagine. Uh, I agree. Eighty percent. I just what they're going to give me. Eighty percent Tucker. Uh, and then I don't know what what the next highest owned guy is going to be. I really don't. We'll take. I, I, I think it'll be somewhere between Reddish and Sharp. So Horton Tucker, what, 88%? Okay. Not bad. Um, and Ooh, they then, Lillard in that one. Look at that. Killian Hayes, 48%. And Lillard. Uh, yeah, Lillard, Sharp, Olenek, Embiid, Jokic. So a lot of Portland. Zach Collins in there. I, I prefer Kessler to Collins, by the way. Oh, and there's Kessler right there behind him. So it's the guys we talked about. But, you know, so, hey, there's there's the Lou Dort, 4,400. Yeah, yeah He's getting some, uh, getting some I, I'm sort of surprised and maybe I should have spent more time on Damian Lillard. I guess without Simons, I, I can certainly understand it. It's just, I don't know. Um, I, I like it's not like Shade, Shade and Sharp is lower usage, he's actually like in some ways can be higher usage than Simons because when, when Lillard plays with Simons, he tends to Simons tends to become the, just a three point shooter role and Sharp will attack a little bit more. So I'm not sure it's as much of a boost to L Lillard as maybe. At least Sabersim is giving it credit for. What is Lillard? Gonna, yeah, you got Lillard. It's hard for me at Lillard and MB like at around the same price to play Lillard ahead of at higher ownership. I, I get it. It's a good matchup. You have no Simons. Maybe I need to rethink this one. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about this one at six Eastern because I, I I'm sort of stuck on what I want to do with Lillard. Look at this. This is the fir the first lineup listed as has the has the aforementioned Tobias Harris in it. Wow. There it is. See, they see they saw there a little something there too. There it is. I love it. Um Elias Harris and 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 and, De and Devontae Graham. Yep. And uh for, for whatever for what it's worth, to everybody, uh, the games on TV tonight are Grizzlies, 76ers, Warriors, Lakers. Um, so I, I I do I do think this is the time of year where let's start giving a little bit of a bigger boost to the to the studs in those games. Um, and I guess that mostly means just tonight, uh mostly mostly means Embiid for me. <laughs> All right. Um, Sheets, anything else? And uh, will you be here with me at six?
I will be there at six. Awesome. Well, guys, let's start the second half of the season, NBA season off right. Good luck to everybody and let's make some money.